This conference will now be recorded. And in our last class, we uh, we are done with the Zendesk top installation with the DDC, right? And I told that we will do a master image installation in our next class, right? So that is something which uh, we are going to see right now. And uh, I think somebody asked regarding the uh, uh, Active Directory. So I share the YouTube link as well, which I was I was telling earlier about the Active Directory configuration and all. So just go through that, guys. And if any doubt, let me know as well. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Gaur. Okay. Yeah, welcome. So now I hope so far you got at least a little bit idea about all these stuff, whatever we are discussing, like uh, prerequisites and uh, master image, GDC and all. So master image can be any word, uh, any operating system, but it uh, depends if it is supported or not supported. Okay. For example, if your users are looking, okay, I, I want Windows XP. Uh, okay, virtual machines. So obviously for Windows XP, you have to create master image as a Windows XP itself right but that is something uh, which is not possible if you have a zen desktop 7.19 okay till uh, 7.15 exceptionally windows xp till it, it was supported due to so and so reason because windows xp and 7 uh, was proved like you know a lifetime operating system that's why in most of the banking uh, most of the uh, you know government sectors as well throughout the world um, there are so many machines which were still on those operating system and the best example uh, are the atm machines that's why microsoft also providing you know uh, extended support even after eol as well but uh, now completely gone that's why citrix also removed that part so that's why <clears throat> this part we need to have a clear you know idea about what kind of operating system we want in our master image if you take my example right now you can see this is windows server 2012 so windows server 2012 r2 i took as a master image you you can take windows 7 you can take windows 8 windows 10 or windows 2008 r2 as well so it's it's your call okay so we can do like that as well now as I told that uh, this master image is what nothing just uh, you create a one virtual machine of 2012 R2 and uh, it will take IP dynamically and then join it to the domain. Once you are done with that part after that what you have to do is you have to insert the same ISO here as well of Zen desktop and if you guys saw the recorded session as well when we opened the ISO in uh, DDC machine at that time we opened delivery controller component right but in this machine we will install master image which is oh, sorry uh, which is vda virtual delivery agent and then only this particular machine will be capable to communicate with our ddc because the moment when you install vda it will ask you about the uh, controller detail and when you will provide the controller detail it will start communicating that's how it works okay so in this machine over here <clears throat> same iso I inserted same thing i will do but instead of selecting uh, you know delivery controller i will select here virtual delivery agent or somewhere people say virtual desktop agent also what it what it will do the the video software which we are going to install here uh, that video software will provide one service called as a citrix desktop service okay that citrix desktop service will allow you to communicate with your ddc because while installation you will provide your controller detail if you have uh, more than one controller yeah okay you are welcome to provide the names for more than one controller as well 
to which particular controller it will communicate that is something which controller will respond fast okay so let this installation be done after that uh, i will show you the architecture behind this registration actually because that is something which is a very uh, you know major component in uh, zen desktop because in zen desktop 80 to 90 percent issues concepts revolves around the registration somehow somewhere you will be connected with it okay so this is how uh, you have to do the vd installation guys when you will do in your lab also similar okay so in i clicked on customize uh, settings because it is installed but you have to click on add components okay so here you can see these will be the two or three options over there so do it manually or do it later these are the generally ones we select to provide the controller name we don't select choose location from active directory or let machine service do it automatically because in both the cases uh, you know the network communication will be high this one is totally uh, based on the network it will broadcast a message over the network and then controller has to reply over the network that okay hey i am the dbc we don't use in production at all this one earlier we used a lot but now people uh, you know stopped using this also because what will happen here uh, it will take controller name from active directory okay so uh, one more communication will get added in our channel that's why to avoid that part of confusion um, people don't use this part as well because here directly you will not provide controller name uh, here itself it will take from active directory now the major option which we uh, people work that is do it manually or do it later now what we have to select we generally we select do it manually why because my controller is ready right now if you guys remember i told you that inside the controller once you set up host connection db and license connection it means your controller is ready now so if it is ready then come over here and provide your controller name okay you can see i provided one controller name already over there if you have multiple let's say i have another one just imagine then you can provide the another controller name as well and then click on test connection and click on add okay in case your controller is not ready suppose you just install the zen desktop because installation takes time even vd installation takes a lot of time so just imagine that uh, your controller is not ready so far so what will you do will you wait for the controller to be ready or can you proceed with your installation so yes we can proceed so what we will do we can come over here and select option or do it later okay so what will happen in this case you are not waiting for controller uh, to be ready you are just continuing your work for vd installation when you will say do it later you will do next next and your vd installation will proceed because vd installation also takes time now let's say video installation is done and after that your controller is ready now where you have to provide the controller information so that is something which we have to go into the registry okay so if you will type reg edit you will go into the registry here then you will go hklm software then citrix and here you will see virtual desktop agent this one okay so here you have to create one registry key list of ddc's registry key name should be exactly same because that's how it is supposed to be done and that's how it is encoded inside so you have to come over here click new and make a string value and give a name over here list of ddc's okay and then provide the value whatever the controller name you have if you have more controller name okay if you have more controller uh, name then just separate by simple giving space no extra characters at all okay so in, let's say if here itself if i have more controller name what i will do 
ddc.lab.com space ddc1.lab.com space ddc2.lab.com okay now which particular controller will respond over here that is something which we will discuss in uh, in pretty much detail okay so just wait for that moment but this is how it is supposed to be configured this is the one of the location where you have to provide second location is if you go to c drive after vda installation it will make a configuration file over here name is personality.ini file okay this file will get created automatically once your vda installation is done so this file you open here and same thing you have to provide here itself list of ddc's equals to ddc.lab.com if you have multiple just give a space and provide another name so these are the two locations where you have to provide the controller name if you are selecting here do it later if you are selecting do it manually then these kind of stuff you need not to do because the moment you will provide the name of controller over here and installation is done automatically it will create entries in the registry as well as in personality.ini file okay if by any chance it is missing in personality.ini file you can just make it but in registry it will be done automatically okay so once you provide over here then uh, you means once it is tested then you will click add it will come over here after that you go next here port number 80 port number by default automatically it will open a port onto the windows firewall uh here there's a twist guys whenever any uh, whenever we are talking about the ports and all sometimes people are obviously using external firewall as well okay so if external firewall is there obviously um, we have to communicate to the networking team because they are the people who will open those kind of structure because this is not your task okay a lot of time it happens that you are in production environment and you got this kind of requirement to open the port so there might be chances that you don't have access to the windows firewall as well so you have to communicate to the windows team or networking team they will help you. but here it is showing you that yes we need a port number 80 go next then over here you oh, have what yeah. number 80 and 443 any difference is there i think both are supporting for the internet or? no 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 wait 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 see here there's a difference okay here 443 we are not using because this one is not for internet connectivity this is for internal mm -hmm. connectivity okay this okay. is for internal connectivity so uh, 443 and 80 all these comes will come into all these comes will come into picture when uh, you know uh, we will do the storefront installation where we will create a website because at that time only it is something which will be a outer surface where people will access over the internet so there this part comes to the picture oh, but here this port number 80 is used for internal communication that's why no 443 okay 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 so that's it after that uh, you have to do next and then once you will come on this page guys here this is a new things came up from Citrix, uh, which is known as a call home so what will happen here if you will select first option i want to participate in call home which is saying recommended or you can say i don't want to participate this is something like whenever you know any application got crashed or something automatically you will get an option to um, send a report to the citrix if uh, you have a citrix subscription and all those things okay so for example if you focused in microsoft as well whenever any application got crashed okay it it give you the option right send report don't send report correct did you guys notice yes no yes, yes. yeah same thing same thing now it is applicable for citrix as well so if you will select call home option then that is something which will be applicable you have to provide the credential and all these things but in 
most of the sectors especially when it comes for the banking where security comes into first then they don't select because in that case what will happen either you are means uh, either you are willing to provide or not to provide somehow somewhere citrix uh, means your x your computer is having access over the uh, citrix file servers so that's why so it is up to you <clears throat> and after that finish that's it so this is about the vd installation so same thing over here as well during the vd installation a lot of prerequisites are there so it will do automatically like it was doing from context because we are inserting here same iso file now once you are uh, done with the installation guys after that what will happen if you open here services.msc path then there you will see one service called as citrix desktop service citrix desktop service this one okay so this is the one which you can see here it manages the communication between the delivery controller and the virtual desktops so let me open side by side event log as well and then i will show you how it do how it works actually uh, this registration process because the moment i will restart this desktop service it will reinitiate the communication with your controller and we will get all the events over here either it is registered or not registered or everything here itself for the registration issues as well if you will search on google uh, you will get uh, you know plenty amount of articles from the citrix so what are the resolution steps and what are the possible errors which are very you know very common uh, which we generally get during the registration i will show you now in registration architecture uh just a second guys let me um open my pdf as well just a second okay so it came up here now <clears throat> i'm going to restart my citrix desktop service and then i will refresh the application event log over here and you will see that few new events will get generated okay so here you can see citrix desktop service after restart Citrix desktop service successfully obtained the following list of one delivery controller with which it is has to be registered. <clears throat> okay, so from where it got the entry? Either it got this entry from registry. That is the first preference. By any chance, if it is not going to the registry, so and so reason, I will show you in the architecture. Then it will fetch the uh, controller name from the personality dot ini file and once it found it resolved the name into the ip address and after that you see the second event over here which is saying citrix desktop service successfully registered with the delivery control clear this is how you have to proceed with your lab as well as whenever you will get chance in the production environment similar way until or unless your master image is not registered guys you are not supposed to create further virtual machines from the zen desktop okay 
so once it is registered then you have to shut down this master image and you have to take a snapshot this is the best practice which you have to follow all the time <coughs> okay so now <clears throat> before uh, shutting down let me explain you about the uh, architecture wise how this actually registration works then only you will get a clear idea where oh, sorry from which part of this infrastructure we are getting this message that successfully registered here okay so let me share this for a second <clears throat> okay so this vd registration guys is actually of uh, you know two types one is soft registration and another one is hard registration okay registration method ad based registration as i told you if you will provide your controller name into the ad or registry based registration which you just now i showed you okay so generally we follow the first one now what is a soft registration after this master image creation and all when you will create catalog means group of virtual machines at that time you, all the virtual machines will get registered because your uh, master image was registered so that kind of registration will be known as a soft registration because till that moment no network traffic was initiated for the machines okay even no uh, monitoring got initiated for the machines until or unless you are not going to assign those virtual machines into the delivery group okay if you remember the th theory part guys i told you what is the delivery group after catalog creation we have to assign virtual machines into delivery group for user assignment as well as power management so until or unless we are not going to do the hard registration means you are not going to assign to the delivery group your machines are known as a soft registration or you can say the partially registered okay till that moment even monitoring will also not get initiated once you will assign them into a, a delivery group then they will be known as a successfully or completely registered or a vda means you can say that uh, their information was sent to the database and monitoring will get initiated okay you can turn on turn off everything you can do and that is something which is a hard registration okay now how this particular re registration get happened let's see over here guys So these are the components which we are having there, right? We have a VDA over here on the master image, desktop service is there, list of DDC registry key is there, either, either I, I have Active Directory, DDC, broker service, and then database. Now let's see how it works. So first of all, as I show you, desktop service will get started once that will get start it will look either in the local registry or personality.ini file now what are the scenarios guys because this is also one of the part where uh, issue come into the picture because sometime that's why i told that whatever the installation you are doing that is something you are supposed to do with the domain admin account because privileges issues are a lot okay until or unless your observe your services and your product and uh, whatever the account you are choosing don't have proper um, privilege then we are not uh, you know supposed to go further so if by default whatever the services are running either they will run with the domain admin account or they will run with the network account that will come by default okay by any chance guys project to project it depends they are uh, it depends in project that uh, might be domain admin account don't have access to read registry as well so in that case it will take the controller name from personality.ini file it happens a lot okay so it will take from personality.ini file so once it 
got the controller name either from registry or from personality from personality file after that it will go to active directory to verify is this machine account valid or not okay if it is valid then what will happen it will select one of the ddc this is the point where i uh, mentioned that if you have multiple controllers and during the vda installation you provided multiple controller names over there ddc1 ddc2 ddc3 like that now which will be responsible for your registration although all controllers are the part of same site they are uh, in the load balancing but still we require one controller which can provide you the registration so that is something which is uh, random behavior or you can say the least busy ddc or whosoever can respond fast will get registered so first of all it will try to communicate to the first controller ddc.lab.com by any chance first controller is not responding or is in hung state then it will communicate to the second controller similarly if it is not responding then third controller if all the controllers are not responding then you will get a message in the event log that it is unregistered due to server communication problem okay now the moment uh it got a entry or it's verified with the active directory then it will reach to the ddc over the ddc we have a broker service guys if you remember and with this ddc it will initiate the communication with the protocol called as wcf windows communication foundation this is the protocol guys which allows these product to communicate internally okay so here once ddc will uh, receive the request from vda then it's his choice okay either receive the connection or reject the connection if ddc is uh, busy then it might reject the connection or maybe ddc is in hung state so it can reject the connection once it will reject what vda will do vda will repeat the whole uh, four process or four steps with another controller because i have multiple controllers okay if ddc receive the connection then no worries so this is what i told if it reject then it will repeat on four steps with another controller if it receive the connection then ddc will also verify vda computer account with active directory so this is something like both side verification is supposed to be done once ddc also got verified then ddc will check inside the database for the computer account and not through the name through the sid secure identifier so every every computer is having sid so it will check inside the database that do we have an existing sid for this uh, vda might be it's an existing one or it's a new one <clears throat> so if it's a new one it will create the entry and then ddc will initiate wcf uh, communication with vda and after that it will query the vda state that are you still up and running or not if yes then set any configuration or policies if we are pushing from ddc and after that it will be marked as a registered so first it will mark as a registered inside the database guys and after that you got a registration event into the event log so the event which you saw okay now where in the event log it is got registered that event log got generated after these 13 steps guys now there could be 13 or there could be 30 articles can be published on issues which got generated in vd registration because each and every step is a part of troubleshooting over here that's why i'm explaining this architecture here okay now failure can happen anywhere guys it can happen here also when it is querying the vda state so let me explain you one by one first problem desktop service starting chances happened where desktop service is not getting started okay and the major reason behind that about your uh, 
performance on the VDA machine or on your master machine. Okay, if your CPU or memory usage is high, at that time your desktop service might stuck. First thing. Second part looks up uh, DDC from registry. Or if, this one I told you. If your account don't have proper proper privilege, then it will not go to the registry. It will take from personality.ini file. Then looks up for the computer account in Active Directory. This is a major part, guys. Because right now you are seeing just one Active Directory. Okay. If I give you example from my previous project FedEx, there were 144 Active Directory server, guys. And 144 different domain as well. Okay. So they have, uh, because Active Directory itself, you know, it's a big ocean. So um, there's a different team and they have different Active Directory trust as well, which allows to communicate from one Active Directory to another Active Directory as well. Now, when VDA is trying to communicate to Active Directory and if Active Directory is not responding, then you have to reach to the ADT. That why it's not responding or which particular, X, because for you, you might touching to the Active Directory one, but exactly you will not come to know to which AD server you are going to touch. For example, you are you are typing facebook.com, gmail.com, google.com. So do these are just an alias name for you guys, but you don't know that this particular domain is getting resolved from which web server at the back end. Similar stuff away. So Google server, Google is having millions of the server at the back end who are responding google.com. Similarly, here itself in production environment. That's why you have to communicate to the AD team that why I'm not getting any response from the AD. Then he will check okay to which particular AD server you are connected. Now, <clears throat> here this is the same part. Then uh, receive or reject connection, as I told you. There's a small twist over here, guys. A lot of people check the performance level on DDC, but hardly people check the performance on database, guys. And this part people know only when they know the architecture. Because inside the DDC, inside the studio, you are getting information from database only. If your database is not properly responding, guys, then obviously you will also get stuck. So it happened uh, with me as well. I, I, I observed this part a lot of time that uh, in database, due to some services or due to some reason, uh, the, the CPU usage was high on DB. So whenever DDC is trying to communicate the database, Okay, database is not responding and if database is not responding, then obviously DDC will not be in a state to respond further. Okay, so now you have to check the performance on the database side as well. After that, you know, uh, this queries the VDA state. This is also one of the big challenge because between this VDA and this DDC guys, there is one thing which is not listed over here that is hypervisor. Okay, so that is something come into the picture because when you uh, you know make a entry over there, suppose here hypervisor is coming to the picture. Now DDC obviously will try to communicate to the VDA, but if your hypervisor is having any kind of issue, okay, there could be an authentication issue, there could be a um, Power issues on on the hypervisor machines are in appending state as I told you that they will be in yellow color. Then your DDC will not get the uh, proper response from the VDA. Or it happened that the moment when VDA raised the request, maybe at that time VDA was fine, but uh, till the time VDA was supposed to get the response from DDC, now VDA is in hung state or maybe it is in power down state. So that's why. DDC is querying the VDA state over there. Once it, it queried the state, and if it is up and running, then I'm absolutely fine to go further. Okay. Clear this part, guys. Registration. Any doubt, make it clear here is itself. Because this is the base of everything in Gen Desktop. Anybody? Any doubt? No, Ibrahim Bug. 
from prints uh, this one for yeah. uh, the first time only it will come like errors or something like you no know, first we are creating from master imaging then mm -hmm. no what are, when when no, when uh, we are getting kind of cases no, all the time no, no, first time all the time prefer because master image we are just preparing as a original image right and once yes. my master image is done i will create virtual machines so whatever mm -hmm. content you have in master image that will copy to the virtual machine so in virtual machines also you would have a vda software right so whenever your virtual machine yes. will power yeah whenever your virtual machines will power on obviously they will communicate to the vdc correct sure. so this registration activity is not for one time every moment when your machine getting powered on they should be in touch with ddc all the time that's what further i'm going to show here how they are connected together uh, after registration as well so that's why till this moment any 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 doubt anywhere because troubleshooting also i explained what are the steps where it, it can be failed if you will remember the architecture you will never start otherwise guys i i saw the scenarios because i am working in citrix r and itself since long back so i saw the scenarios where we have to uh, you know uh, configure a new master image altogether there there were the issues like that and the major issue comes with the privilege okay small small issues you can rectify but when uh, issues comes with the privilege it's really hard to rectify the stuff because citrix uh, modifies a lot of stuff on the windows when installation happens that's the reason <clears throat> okay no doubt here can i go further guys yes sir So here, this is the part, guys. Where once registration is done, as right now I got registration event in the event log. After that, your VDA will start a heartbeat pinging to the DDC all the time. Okay. And if this heartbeat ping is missing. From any of the end, either from VDA or from DDC, immediately DDC will mark you as a unregistered inside the database, guys. Okay. Now this that's why I'm saying that once we, uh, registration is done, then communication is there, and it will be there for so long till the moment your virtual machine is up and running. Okay. yes and yeah so this is what will happen if your vda lose the communication from the ddc means ddc is not getting heartbeat ping from the vda then ddc will immediately unregister the vda inside the database immediately now there could be a second option as well this one so VDA is trying to communicate to DDC, but he is not responding, or uh, DDC is not responding. So in the, in that case, what will happen? As I told you, VDA will try to register with another controller, following all the steps. And if all the controllers are not responding, then you will get an event in the event logs about the unregister. Okay, clear, guys this is what we are uh, doing so far site we created hosting infrastructure storage resources and all then master image we are done and now we are going to create virtual machines for further okay <clears throat> so now we are sure that it is registered because we saw the event log so what i am going to do is i am going to shutting down this master image and we'll take a snapshot before creation of a catalog normally in the vm where we are not we are not supposed to go for shutdown directly we can take the snapshot no? <coughs> but yes, we can but uh, 
best practice says we are supposed to do the reason i will tell you because this master image is not a normal virtual machine guys okay this master image is a de uh, delegated part of your infrastructure because in future if you remember the conceptual class i explained that in future if any kind of updation is required let's say from this master image you created 200 virtual machine of windows 7 or some applications in future let's say some patches are required so where will you do in the master images itself and then from the master image those changes will get pushed to all the virtual machines now this particular master image we have to shut down and keep a copy on a different different geographical location generally we do in production environment where we have a bigger one or if we don't have geographical multiple location then might be we can copy in the same location but at different different area because if something happened to this uh, to this master image if it is up and running because obviously if machines are up and running then they are more liable to you know to get corrupt okay it happens that's why uh, to avoid that kind of situation we shut down them take a snapshot and keep this copy of uh, master image somewhere as well so that if something happened here or by mistake also if it got deleted here no worries we do have otherwise if let's say you didn't take any precautionary steps and something happened to this ddc so sorry this master image then your existing infrastructure will become orphan infrastructure guys and we can't do any kind of update over there what we have to do simple delete the machines and then recreate all new machines from the scratch that's why we have to take this step because this is a delegated part clear okay now come over here snapshots because uh, in my last to last project when ransomware virus attack happened okay at that time there are few infrastructure sorry there are few uh, vms were on hyper v okay and due to this that ransomware virus attack hyper v was affected uh, you know ran throughout and lot of lot of machines got deleted from there so that's why if that is something in the scenario because it can happen anytime so we had a backup of everything that's why we were on a safer side otherwise it's, it, it was like a gone case so we have to take those steps now here take a snapshot so today date is 26 generally snapshot we take guys with the date and whatever new updates you have in the snapshot enter into the description over here okay and then take a snapshot once it is there then come to the ddc and on the ddc over here will come and create a machine catalog okay whenever you make any kind of change guys then you are supposed to take a snapshot so that if anything happens due to that change at least we can revert and this is something happens a lot when whenever windows patches got installed guys because you don't know which particular patch will affect what kind of stuff a uh, lot of time we have to do the rollback so that's all now here you will go next now this part you have to select what kind of server or what kind of operating system you do have in your master image in my case i have server os in my master image so I will choose the first option. If I was having desktop OS, then I will choose the desktop OS option. What is this remote PC access? This part I told you guys that uh, in Zen Desktop we have an option to access your physical computers remotely as well. Where you guys were giving example of Team Viewer and all those things. Okay, so this is the option here: remote PC access. So what you have to do is Suppose you you want to access your laptop through Zen Desktop. 
so you have to install vde in your laptop but before vde installation your laptop should be registered into the domain where uh, we have a ddc or in a different domain but uh, it should there should be a trust between them and uh, once it is registered with the domain then you have to install vda and it will get registered with the ddc also and then you can select this option if you focus on the left hand side the moment you select desktop os you will get a lot of options here like machine management desktop experience and but and machines also but when you click remote pc access no option why because if you are doing that kind of work then we are not supposed to treat it as a master image and that's the reason guys i told you that master image can be virtual only not physical now are you guys able to correlate whatever we discussed in the um, you know theory part because every line whatever i told that is having a weightage over there and i'm correlating every stuff clear guys oh yes okay so now in my case i'm having server os go next now here you have to select what kind of machine you would like to choose suppose you are saying obviously if uh, it's a physical machine then not power manage okay because physical machine if you will uh, you know power off from the main switch itself then how can i power on it from the laptop right because that's a different story altogether that's why that those are not power managed you can shut down by giving the command from here but you can't start them by giving command from here because they are connected with the main power switch virtual machines obviously you can do the power management now in the virtual machines also which technology you are going to choose mcs when i'm saying mcs it means it's a zen desktop pvs this is a provisioning services service which i will discuss later different product or another service or technology because people might have existing virtual machines as well over the hypervisor which they can manage with the help of citrix also by simply adding their accounts i will show you further but in my case i am using mcs which is zen desktop so here resources will come into the picture guys whatever resources you selected those are coming over here this is the area so this is how you have to select if you remember i gave example of australia and india users so here you have to select so suppose during the during creation of host connection you created the resources for australia and india now during the creation of catalog you have to select the resources from here so which resource you will select that particular storage and network will get utilized simple okay so in my case we created august new resources so i will choose this one one more thing guys let me go back uh, nowadays linux os machines also are supported so if you would like to create linux virtual machines in your environment then you have to communicate uh, you know uh, with the citrix team they will provide you some different document because the new stuff got created and i think uh, different charges for them as well but yeah now we have a supportability for linux as well. okay so here it is expanding your master image okay and you can select the snapshot which you have uh, created can anybody ex tell me uh, just cross question guys let me see how much you are connected with so far how i'm getting this information over here this master image information how i'm able to fetch it any idea anybody from vda vda no because your master image is shut down so there is no communication with internally okay so mm -hmm. something else come on just think more noor any idea ibrahim mm, i think this guys are on mute 
Okay, uh, what was the original uh, question? I missed it. Sorry? So, what was the original question? I missed it. Okay, uh, the original question is how I am able to fetch these master image detail over here. You remember uh, we created a snapshot of the master image right just mm -hmm. now so yeah. how am i able to fetch them you can see i'm I, I can see here itself this is the snapshot 26 which i created just now so how am i able to fetch over here on the ddc is the local copy stored or cached uh no Okay, this time I'm telling you guys, but uh, make sure uh, that you guys are connected because uh, this is how you have to learn this Citrix product, guys. Okay, otherwise, a lot of lot of questions will come up in your mind without any answer. So, simple thing, all these stuff are set up where it's on hypervisor. Master image is located on the hypervisor, right? So whatever information I'm fetching from here, obviously I'm communicating first with the hypervisor only, right? Then only I'm getting this information. If my hypervisor got shut down, I can't fetch anything. So there's a service, remember host service. So with the help of host service, I am connected with hypervisor all the time. And due to which I'm able to inf uh, find out all the information from the hypervisor. Because whatever virtual machines you can see over here, all these virtual machines are running on the hypervisor only, guys. That's what I'm able to fetch them. Clear now? Yes. Because no, this is how... also near this. Tell me, tell me. No, 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 yeah, no, there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing like a local way because local if if uh, everything in the local cache then I will shut down the hypervisor and uh, it, it won't okay because local cache always will give you static information guys but dynamically you have to be there right so uh, suppose your hypervisor is down and let's say you are clicking on here Will it communicate to the snapshot? No, right? No. So that's why it is not from local cache. It is through the host service. That's why host service is supposed to run all the time. Okay. Yes. And uh, this is the part, guys, which I was talking about. That what kind of video version you have in your master image? That is something you have to choose from here. Okay, you have 7.9 version, 7.11, 7.8. What kind of video version you have? That is something you have to choose over here. So in my case, I have the latest one. That's why first one got selected. No problem. Now here I will select the master image. Go further. How many virtual machines you want to create? You have to provide option over here one virtual machine two three in my case the uh, example which i gave earlier there was 200 virtual machines so i can give 200 over here but that's a small twist guys that uh, while creating a catalog let's say i have a requirement of 100 or oh, sorry thousand virtual machines so creation of thousand virtual machines in one shot will make slow okay but if i will create them into a small small bunches then it will be fast and what is the reason behind that i will show you later this is not the correct time for that because there we have to uh, discuss about the disk concept okay now whatever ram right now your master image is having that is something is fetched over here so this 4gb ram i didn't give right from where it got it is reading the property of your master image so my master image having 4gb that's why it's saying okay give 4gb ram to every virtual machine okay it totally depends on your resources if you have that kind of resources available then give 4gb otherwise reduce it to 1gb or as much as you want simple now 
this is something guys which is a uh, very important that is cash size okay so what it will do in your virtual machine there will be one disk where you have operating system and all apart from that if you will select this option there will be one extra disk okay with size whatever you mentioned over here let's say i'm giving 2 gb so one extra 2 gb disk will get attached to each and every virtual machine to handle 1 gb of local cache okay on virtual machine whatever right now we are talking this is for virtual machine not for control okay so 1 gb cache i am allocating to each and every virtual machine now this is up to you would you like to proceed for that if you don't want the cache then okay but why we give the cache memory cache is same like page file or it will no. be processed or not like that. No. okay it's... let me ask you this is not about virtualization guys this is about the operating system concept so cache you, you um, so th this basically, if the memory, uh, basically the, the RAM portion runs out, um, mm -hmm. it's supposed to write to the disk. So that that's the cache this refers uh, to. No. If that is the case, then what is the page file? Oh, that's the page file, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. So then what is in, the cache? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm coming to yeah. the point, guys. No, okay, okay, so, okay. Yeah, uh, this is that's something. This is not about the virtual environment, e even in physical computer as well. In there's a uh, you know memory concepts. If you guys remember, the, on the first level we have a hard disk, which is known as a ROM, right? Read only memory. After that hard disk, we have a RAM. After RAM, we have a cache, and after cache, we have a registers which is a physical diode if you guys remember my little bit in electronics there is a tricolor diodes over there so if, if in in the microchips there are plenty amount of diodes are there they stored one one byte information two two byte information like that so these are you know categorized on the level of their performance hard disk comes on the lower level ram work on the fast level then out of the ram a very small information goes to the cache for you know uh, for more fast access and then from the cache a very small information go to the register okay and that's how our computer works so cache is the fastest memory compared to the ram as well but ram and cache and register all are the volatile means the moment you log off from your system every information is gone but in hard disk that is not the case because that is non-volatile memory okay so this is this is the sequence hard disk then ram then cache and then register hard disk is a big of size ram is having a small size then cache more small and then register is uh, register works on the bit or byte level i don't remember exactly okay so a small portion of the or a small content of the ram which is supposed to be uh, you know execute at, at the moment that comes to the cache and from the cache how it works that it goes to the register and from the register only execution happens that's how it works on the electronic level similarly on the virtual machine as well if i won't have cache for all the ios input output operations it will communicate to your ddc all the time and in that case what will happen guys performance will be a little bit slow but if that if you have a cache then all the input output operation will go into the cache only and for everything it will not come to the ddc that's how uh, our purpose will get resolved clear this part guys any doubt nice. okay. one more thing you have to be aware about the cache that cache size let's say i give 1 gb here the moment you will start working 
immediately this 1 GB will not get occupied. 1 GB I gave you the maximum size. That okay, boss, beyond this you can't go. But this 1 GB will not get filled immediately. How it works? Cash works on the basis of usage. You work for one minute, cash will be filled small, sorry, a little bit. You work for one hour, more memory. You work for two hours, more memory, so on. And it also depends on what kind of operation you are performing. Let's say you are working only on one application. Obviously, small uh, cash size will get occupied. You are working on 10 applications for 10 hours, for 20 hours. Obviously, more there's a more content in the cache and more size will get occupied. So cache size grow as per the usage. Okay, clear this part. Yes. Okay, so after that, you go next. Oh, sorry. It's saying memory cache size cannot exceed VM memory. So cache size and memory i gave the same so that's why it is saying let's say increase this one okay now here it is going to communicate with your active directory oh, or it's print uh, it's only one question so what about the uh, production environment normally in the production environment how many gb they are giving like same like 2 gb only the same 2 GB RAM uh, production in any again, company like again again it depends that what what operating system you have in your virtual machine okay because if you have Windows 7 then obviously or if you are giving 2 GB also it will work well no problem but if you are giving uh, let's say Windows 2016 you have a master image and then you are giving 1 GB or 2 GB it won't work well at all yes okay so this that's why there are a lot of uh, constituents on not only with the controller it also depends on the operating system okay. Okay. Yeah. this administrator part we are the one creating the vms or uh, who will be no if i'm a critics administrator you, i'm also going to uh, yes you you are supposed to but uh, that part also i will let you know further because in studio also administrators would have a different different roles okay and generally l1 administrator won't have this kind of access to create machines guys okay because to create machines you should have a little bit idea about here and there so that's why l1 people don't have this permission and how to declare those permissions that will come later okay so this is the part here where you have to choose organizational unit OU from the active directory so that your machine account will get created. So if you have multi-domain environment, you have to select over here which domain you would like to choose. I have one domain, so only that domain is there in picture, no problem. If <clears throat> you have an existing environment, then go with this option, sorry, existing, you know, active directory accounts then go to this option otherwise go to this option so when we go to this option just take an example let's say i created 200 virtual machine sequence says vm01 vm02 vm03 till vm200 due to so and so reason 10 vms got deleted or intentionally administrator deleted them might be they have some issues so from vm20 to vm30 10 vms got deleted now i have to create 10 vms again but i need same machine account means same naming convention so that is not possible if your machine account is not available in the active directory because you can't enter in the mid of sequence guys this thing you have to remember okay suppose you created vm1 to vm200 and 30 or let's say 10 vms got deleted from vm20 to vm30 and due to any reason if it got deleted then if you will create new machines as well they will take the new account from vm201 and then it will create to vm210 
but if you want the same machine account which was deleted earlier then you should have existing account name in the active directory that's why whenever we delete any virtual machine we have the option that uh, would you like to delete only machines or would you like to delete account as well or would you like to clean every stuff about this particular virtual machine so that is completely depend on us okay so that's why if we have existing account in active directory we can browse them we can import them over here and then i can use the similar one if that is not the case then i will go with the first one with the new creation and new creation you will do with like this one okay hash hash is required because with the help of this hash only our zen desktop will be uh, you know in a state to create multiple machine account name for you because you gave a command on the on the previous page for 200 vms over here you are saying okay i want 200 vms so how uh, zen desktop will come to know what is the account need to provide so you have to give like this right now it's selling as geo one two because a lot of machines are there at the back end okay otherwise it will show like here zero zero one so can anybody uh, tell me if i have to create thousand virtual machines then what sh uh, means how many hash i have to provide over here tell me this. four hash sorry 19 four hash four exactly yes 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 because it will start from 0, 0, 0, 1 and then it will go to 1000 because in 1000 we have a four digit clear this part so prior to hash give whatever name you want and even post hash as well you can give the name whatever you want but hash are mandatory because that is the only you know count or you can you can say that is the only countable object with the help of uh, that Zen desktop is able to create multiple VMs. And this hash hash, you can, right now it is giving you numerical value, you can take it uh, algebraic value also. But that doesn't make much sense because this is very easy to identify. Clear this part, how it gives name, naming convention? This is Okay. So here we have to go next and this is the scope option which i told we'll discuss later and after that you have to click here machine account oh, sorry machine catalog name whatever you want to provide so and so and any description you would like to give and then finish it off that's it and then catalog creation will be in progress so this catalog creation uh, takes time guys and now let me explain you what are the factors or what are the troubleshootings uh, or what are the issues comes when we create a catalog okay so first one is it takes long time can you guys think and uh, tell me what could be the factor behind the you know long duration which this particular catalog process is going to because whatever steps we got out of from here itself all troubleshooting comes so can anybody uh, just give any idea catalog is a group of uh, like vms no correct um, maybe it takes to register all the vms it's going to register all the if, if one one if, if, if vm that's why exactly. maybe it takes time. Exactly, you are absolutely correct. So it means group of virtual machines, or you can say more number of virtual machines, more time this catalog is going to take to be uh, done. Right? If you are creating one virtual machine, catalog creation will be fast. If you are creating thousand virtual machine at the same time, catalog creation will be slow. That is a one thing. What could be another one? Thing, guys. This is how you have to do the troubleshooting every time. What could be another possibilities? And whatever I am telling you, 
all these are the real time stuff because i faced all these stuff that's why i'm explaining what else just try to correlate whatever we discussed in theory part as well or in, in previous classes also just try to correlate then only you will be connected okay one hint i'm giving okay. when you will create catalog it means you are creating virtual machines end of the day where all those virtual machines will go storage exactly it means the catalog have a you know correlation with the storage also right so as i told you on the hypervisor there could be uh, plenty amount of storage of different different type so if storage performance is slow obviously your catalog creation will automatically get slow correct yeah yeah now th these are the two points what could be another one third point come on network latency exactly because we are connecting to hypervisor and um, in production environment i would not say 100% but 40 to 50% scenarios i saw where hypervisor is in different network altogether and your uh, you know Zen desktop environment is on different network. We have a connectivity between them. That is a different story, but network is different. So yes, network latency also matters a lot. What else? Somehow, somewhere, do we have any link up with the database also? Do you guys think like that? Because, so oh, mm -hmm. the database also it's connected you know, it's, it's, it's existing. yeah because uh, if database is also having any kind of issues related to cpu memory or any kind of issues then also this will get slow okay before i talk to what about allocation because we don't have much allocation in the vmware when vmware is on and after it's like that you mean to say like, like any kind of issue from hypervisor uh hypervisor in the sense, yeah allocation of ram or something yes. else yeah 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 that's, that's why yes yes that that is for sure but allocation uh you know what will happen sometimes <clears throat> if there is no proper resources available then it will not get any you know it will not slow it will get failed mm. it means your catalog creation will get failed immediately not not slow because suppose if you are giving 200 VM of 4 GB of RAM, so 200 multiply 4, mm. 800 GB RAM is required, and that is not available on your hypervisor. What will happen? Your catalog creation will get failed, not slow. Okay, and it will get slow only and only when you have a, any issues on the hypervisor. Maybe hypervisor has some slowness problem, or maybe storage is having some issue. Then it will get slow. Okay. Another, okay. another we another, can't another, create more hypervisor like you know we have like a hundred yeah yeah, yeah you but, can. but uh, everything hmm. everything everything uh, you know depend on the cost factor as well. every project don't have that much of money hardly hardly i saw hypervisors uh 10 or maximum 20 i saw not more than that okay it, it, everything require you know big cost behind them so that's why but yes you could have multiple hypervisors and uh, as i told you what kind of hypervisor you have based on that we have connectivity if you have zen server we are connected with the master server if you have vmware we are connected with the vcenter server so that is a different story okay now another factor is active directory Okay, yes. another factor, Wait, another factor is Active Directory. If your Active Directory is slow, obviously our catalog creation will also get slow. Why? Because the moment you finish, right, <clears throat> whatever information you gave so far in previous steps, all those information will get accumulated and executed. 
so until or unless all the steps will not get cleared your catalog creation will not be done that's the reason okay that's the reason why uh, this is supposed to be done properly and you know uh, like obviously it depends on ddc performance also that is you know first thing which we forgot and uh, <clears throat> that's the reason that we have to create the catalog <clears throat> with the less number of machines not in bulk okay and what is the reason behind that on the basis of disk concept i will show you in the disk part because when we create virtual machines they also create disks and uh, then you will understand that okay or if we are creating 200 virtual machine what is the problem and why provisioning services pvs come into the picture guys okay <clears throat> so this part i will correlate with you guys in the next class not today okay 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 so so far guys uh, if you are guys uh, if you are setting your lab as well till the catalog creation you can continue okay so beyond after catalog after this you will finish and catalog creation will happen after that we have to create the delivery group and that concept we will discuss in our next class okay so till catalog creation you can proceed guys any doubt tell me uh, i do have a question <clears throat> tell me you sent me those uh, isos mm -hmm. yeah uh, hypervisor i was able to install okay and uh, but i am uh, stuck uh, there at uh, your citrix uh, virtual apps and desktop okay uh, let me ask you one thing uh, hypervisor did you install on a bare metal yes a separate machine okay so you installed zen server there no, that is where I am stuck. Then what did you install? Only hypervisor. When I finished hypervisor, I do have two hard drives. Then I did add that additional hard drive. No, 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 no. That is not. That's what I'm saying. That is not the bare metal. Bare metal means, if you remember, I shared one pic as well. You have to format your system. Complete, delete everything. No hard drive, nothing. You have to format and insert your you know that iso which i give to you direct over there yeah, that's what i did then how could you have drives there there is no chance of drives it's a linux see, machine what is it there? there is no drive see there are two hard drives in my system one is 250 gig one is one terabyte mm -hmm. so when i install i start with uh, my hypervisor cd it asked uh -huh. gave me the option to install it on uh, which drive so i selected the 250 gig but when uh -huh. i finished and then mm -hmm. when i installed this uh, zen server on my uh, uh -huh. zen center on my laptop and i accessed that i was uh -huh. only it was only showing me one hard drive local storage that was 250 gig Correct, correct. It will use that uh, command to add that add, uh, additional one terabyte hard drive. After that, I want to install this uh, Zen server or what you call it. Uh, Zen desktop. Zen desktop. Mm -hmm. So this has to be done on uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I yeah. have this, I gave the name as. Uh, I shahid and I see under infrastructure mm -hmm. when I log on to I shahid, mm -hmm. uh, I see all these things. But uh, from here, where should I go for that? I should start as a uh, virtual machine, right? Wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, wait. Wait for the virtual machine. So the thing is, if you, if you, uh, how you have to suppose to do the installation, guys? uh side by side you have to just open my video whatever recorded sessions you are getting and then follow exactly if you if you following that part in my first video what i did first i opened the zen center i added my zen server over here and then i told you in first thing you have to create a domain controller 
once you are done with the domain controller then you have to create the ddc and this ddc is also what right click and create virtual machine right and inside the virtual machine install 2012 r2 operating system and then join join that virtual machine to the domain whatever name you are giving and after that you have to do the zen desktop installation over here but before zen desktop installation you have to keep all the isos in one location and uh, you have to provide the unc path over here like i created this one so all these things uh, we discussed in the first session so that's what i'm saying you open the recorded session side by side and then then do uh, accordingly okay so this this is uh, something which you have to do if you are done with the zen server installation then this would be the next step okay so okay i will go through with that but what about yeah. this uh, uh -huh. uh, you have uh, you did uh, send another one provision uh, there was it another is. do we have to install on the hypervisor or where does it has to no no wait, wait wait you are talking about pvs provisioning services yes For, forget about that right now because one oh. by one we had we will do right now i didn't discuss anything about pvs okay we discussed just dc ddc and this master image same thing you have to do okay provisioning services is totally a different product different concept we we have a classes for them so just wait that is a, uh, after some time it will come so right now whatever we discuss just uh, play the session and do accordingly so this should okay. be the next step okay all right thank you okay hey. that will connect so, on yeah yeah one minute i i i am planning to buy uh, this one desktop i guess today it will come plus i have to install a bare metal i think this guy he told me like first he want to install windows then he want no, to no, check no. the configuration and all no no he no, want no. to check okay. the uh, see i i will tell you one thing i will tell you one thing okay uh who say uh, you are going to purchase an assembled one or a brand new yeah, one? assembled one like uh, assembled. yeah uh, new adm uh, yeah yeah AMD, AMD. Uh, server the day you can the configuration yeah 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 okay so uh, um, how much ram and, uh, and hard disk um now uh, nearly 16 gb ram uh, and uh, it's like a mi2 uh, they put for 500 gb mi2 Uh, then they are planning to uh, 1 tb hard disk i think 1 tb didn't buy 500 uh, uh, 500 gb of our msc then okay. uh, 60 gb ram so so as you are saying that you would like to verify the resources okay so they will install okay. windows let them install don't worry let them install okay. windows and because from the windows end you guys are obviously very much familiar how to check the resources and every stuff you do all those your testing part just to verify because that is something you are putting a money there once you are done that okay he installed he assembled a correct part whatever you were looking for after that once you will bring it home no problem direct insert the cd of hypervisor and everything will get formatted simple no worries so i don't we need um so i haven't started so don't we need the um mm -hmm. uh like if we have windows already installed don't we need a vm to install the hypervisor on like a uh, VMware no, VMA workstation no, or no 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 that, that VMware not... workstation VMware workstation is not a bare metal hypervisor if you that's why i said if you have a separate box which you can format and you can utilize just only for citrix then go with the bare metal hypervisor if right. that is not the case then only we have to take a help of VMware workstation so these are the two different kind of lab setup like bhakt and ibrahim both are going for a bare metal so are you also going to select the similar kind of bare metal no or like my, i mean my laptop doesn't have uh, okay have then uh, okay no worries no worries then for you let me draw a chart how you have to proceed then it will be very easy for you okay don't worry because there is a different setup for that so first of all you will install a vmware workstation okay uh -huh. once you install a vmware workstation inside the vmware workstation you can make a virtual machine and make it as a domain controller no worries okay 
after that this virtual machine will be windows okay after that you make a, another virtual machine another virtual machine there and that virtual machine will be linux okay that virtual machine will be linux or suse in linux there are so many vendors and this virtual machine you are going to make it as a zen server guys okay in 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 this kind of environment it's a bit typical uh, in, in infrastructure but yes if you have a laptop then you have to do in this way so inside so the, this the domain controller it has to be like uh, you said 2012 r2 right windows yeah 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 that will be great if you make it. is there a specific version for the susc uh, there's no specific version whatever is the latest in your make sure vmware workstation should be the latest one i think 14 one so in that put in that latest of vm workstation whatever the latest you will get susc that you can select no worries okay, okay. after uh, once you create this one then here you have to insert your zen server cd and you have to provide all the resources to this zen server when i'm saying all the resources means at least 16 gb ram or uh, 20 gb ram if you have availability at least provide to this and give 500 gb of hard disk to this or at least 300 gb at least 300 gb to this vm which is zen server because now further onward every stuff okay every stuff means your ddc will also be under this particular virtual machine only so mm -hmm. how will you create now is once your zen server is ready done your installation is done then you will install a zen center in your laptop normal and then inside your laptop you will connect your zen server and then you will start creating virtual machine so further onwards whatever virtual machines you are going to create those virtual machines will go inside the zen server okay not right. inside the vmware workstation so a little bit typical architecture but this is how you have to put so sure. what you are going to do here you are going to make a virtual machine as a bare metal hypervisor which is known as a nested virtualization right so like i mean i guess i i have a, so because i mean yeah um the, the mm -hmm. ram is you know mm -hmm. like especially being on top of windows uh and everything that that's gonna stretch it um mm -hmm. so i'm thinking of like doing a emulation onto a you know ssd drive for the extra ram um so in terms of just like what do you recommend like you know how many cores should we assign each like you know each of them should be assigned two cores i mean you know it's not gonna yeah. have enough or like or mm -hmm. like one core is enough if no no two if you will assign for domain controller uh, for single virtual machine you provide one core no problem but for zen server you should provide two core because uh, further onwards every stuff is going to build on the zen server only. okay so okay. two cores itself and two logical processor or like four logical or no no two 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 okay yeah that is more than enough because unnecessary if we will waste the resource also that is not that doesn't also make sense because it's a uh, you know lab environment so not much load like but in production it's a totally different story so that's why clear okay any doubt yes if you have anything we'll be we will make you on a friday yeah yeah we will connect on friday uh 6 a.m ist i think uh one and a half hour earlier than this time i think 8 30 p.m est okay on your thursday so like instead of vm workstation can't we use um zen desktop to do do the zen desktop no hey, one minute one minute where zen desktop came into picture here because vmware uh, workstation is a high yeah level. like i mean yeah like i mean obviously like i don't have a um, licensed copy of vm workstation right so um no, no like, not required license copy uh, that's okay. fine uh, because whatever for few version it, it will work that's fine you just proceed no worries uh -huh. yeah because 
if we have option here vmware workstation otherwise oracle virtual box so or vmware fusion fusion is for mac os so you have these option only so because you this is something you are selecting type 2 hypervisor so mm -hmm. if you are building on laptop this should be the scenario gotcha. okay 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 guys then uh, i'm stopping here i hope you got you got uh, information over here and uh, just utilize this information along with the recorded sessions and uh, we'll connect in the friday till that you can continue uh, till the catalog configuration okay 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 bye 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 bye, bye.